last time we were looking at the business to business e-commerce and looked at our familiar example which I have been using all along. Namely, there is a vendor who supplies items to a purchaser and the purchaser in the case of electronic commerce both the vendor and purchaser have their own intranets or local area networks and both are computerized and both are connected by a communication line now, normally a, a public switch telephone network um, and or sometimes a private uh, dedicated line or nowadays it is something called uh, uh, virtual private networks is coming which is on the internet. So, VPNs are also another way of interconnecting two businesses. Now, the first uh, purchase order is entered by the business which, want, which wants to purchase items in its own PC and uh, it is electronically dispatched to the vendor by email. Vendor acknowledges the uh, order electronically. The whole point is that everything is uh, on the electronic uh, speed on communication lines and the vendor dispatches the goods physically uh, by a truck or train or whatever, what have you and um, then the when the business which is a purchaser essentially um, compares the delivery note which came by along with the uh, items physically against the order both because uh, the original de delivery note would, would also would have come by electronic mail apart from the uh, physical delivery note. So, you normally compare the electronic delivery notes so that comparison is very simple, but in during inspection the uh, handwritten one or typed one or whatever would also be used uh, because ultimately as I said inspection has to take place before acceptance and discrepancy not of any can be immediately sent to the vendor. That is with the comparison of the delivery note with the um, purchase order can be compared electronically and immediately you can send a uh, reply or if there is any discrepancy to the vendor and he can also immediately reply saying that maybe I made a mistake or whatever or say some items are coming later on or uh, maybe the next, next consignment in a day or uh, two whatever ok. And um, as uh, because both the businesses have their own lands the uh, purchaser of uh, business one as we call it can carry out all local transactions using its own intranet or local area network and local transactions are inventory update by stores, advice to accounts to pay for goods taken into stock all those things which we had in the data flow diagram of this example though in the data flow diagram we actually showed the uh, documents as documents flowing uh, within the uh, boxes in that case the circles which are the processes and um, the same thing is mimicked except that there is no physical paper movement it is only purely electronic electronic paper electronic uh, message movement you might say or local electronic mail within the organization. So, for instance uh, as soon as inspection accepts the items based on inspection the accepted items uh, and details of that is electronically sent to the stores. So, stores can automatically update and as soon as they update their inventory they can send in turn um, a note saying this much of stocks have been taken into uh, inventory and now you can pay the vendor and uh, now the accounts department can in fact even pay by to the, the vendor electronically by act actually sending the uh, money by electronic bank transfer to the bank account of the vendor. So, these are all becoming possible because banks are also connected to uh, a network and um, there is also of course other payment methods like check payments, electronic check payments and so on we will cover later on in this uh, in this set of lectures ok. So, um, 
Uh, one simple way of course is if the bank account number is given and you have access to the bank then you can send to the bank a message saying that uh, electronically you can transfer this, uh, this amount from my bank account to the bank account of the vendor. Okay. These are all can, can be done electronically. That is the advantage. In fact, the payment becomes uh, very, very uh, fast and uh, there is no postal delay and stuff like that. That is one of the greatest uh, advantage, advantages of e-commerce. We will we'll later on look at the advantages and disadvantages of e-commerce compared to the current method. Not, I would say a lot of businesses are now converting to e-commerce and uh, because of the convenience and because uh, all la large businesses have already uh, internets um, which are working in their organizations. So, uh, business to business e-commerce is one of the fastest growing segments of e-commerce. Uh, earlier on, the segment which is growing very fast was the B 2 C e-commerce. That also continues to grow with the uh, more and more people buying PCs and PCs working from home. But B 2 B is something which uh, is economically a lot more important for businesses to improve their uh, overall functioning and uh, that is the reason why B 2 B e-commerce is growing uh, quite fast okay? because businesses uh, already have uh, fairly good in computing infrastructure in their organizations. But there are some prerequisites for this uh, business to business e-commerce because we said that the uh, purchaser sends his purchase order electronically and the vendor sends a delivery note electronically and the payment is also sent by the accounts and so on. So, for all this to happen and for electronic comparison of purchase order against delivery note, agreed on standards which be there in terms of the way in which the document will be formatted because it is coming electronically. You must know the format that in other words what each field represents. Okay, So, that you can actually do a proper job of uh, uh, reading that and interpreting it and comparing it with the note and all these are required. So, the uh, common formats which are required are primarily this exchange of data is called electronic data interchange. For that you require a standard um, because if everybody follows his own technique then there will be a lot of problems because a vendor is not dealing with only one business. He is dealing with multiple businesses. There is a whole lot of different purchasers are there. Similarly, a purchaser may not go to a single vendor. He will go to different vendors depending upon which vendor supplies what and which vendor is competitive and so on. So, for each vendor if he has to use a different format it will be quite quite a uh, uh, what I would say unnecessary work on the part of the purchaser to be able to send purchase orders uh, in all kinds of different formats to different people. Similarly, the vendor also if he receives purchase orders from uh, multiple uh, uh, purchases all in different formats, he will have difficulty in interpreting them. So, there is a requirement for electronic data interchange standard uh, to exchange data electronically. And, um, and of course, the another prerequisite we said is that each uh, business must have a corporate intranet. So, that and then they should be connected by a PSTN or leased line or a virtual private network. So, transactions must be secure. Whatever transactions are all these purchase order, the um, uh, delivery note, the particularly payments and so on which go through the public switch telephone network must be secure because public switch telephone network by definition is publicly available to a lot of people. In other words, it is accessible by a large number of different people. So, when somebody when different people can access, then they can also eavesdrop. In other words, they can kind of listen into the transactions that are going, going on between two people and that it could be very dangerous because your competitors 
can really undercut you and things like that. So, there is a need for security and uh, security concern particularly in a public switch telephone network is used is extremely important in electronic commerce and that uh, we later on will look uh, in great detail about the security issues in uh, e-commerce. And um, similarly, over and above security is required for documents also besides documents security becomes lot more important when you talk about payment methods. Payment methods uh, because money is something which uh, uh, one has to protect. I mean, there is there's always temptation uh, of uh, stealing, uh, particularly if it is stealing from your home using a PC and a, and a public switch telephone network through the internet and so on. The temptation is there uh, for stealing, and that is the reason why you should really make double doubly sure that uh, any money transactions going on on the network. Uh, what I mean by money transactions are transactions such like such as credit card trans transactions, debit card transactions, check transactions and so on. All these different means of um, transacting with, uh, with money has to be protected with great amount of care. So, that is the way in which the B2B commerce happens. Okay. Whereas, the B2C commerce uh, is slightly different because here the um, a business has several customers okay. and but the business which is selling can kind of impose certain kinds of formats for, uh, uh, for ordering because what they will do is as, as pointed out here the uh, cons customer uses a browser and locates a vendor. Uh, see, there are two ways of locating a vendor using a browser. That you use, use a browser, and if you use, you know, you know the unique uh, resource locator. If you have the URL or the website address, you can use the address directly. If you don't know, then you can go to a search engine like Google, and uh, in search engine, you can look. You can say that. Uh, I want to purchase, uh, say, a uh, washing machine. If you are a customer buying, trying to buy a washing machine, then it will kind of uh, come up with uh, vendors who deal with this washing machine. Then you can select one of those vendors. Okay. And uh, once you get the vendor's um, uh, web page, you can look at the listing of items available, prices. Uh, brands and things like that, delivery time and uh, guarantees, what all are, are required by you before you make a purchase decision, they will all be available there. And customer selects, you know, he may look at multiple vendors because uh, one vendor uh, may not provide the kind of facilities he requires. So, he may look at the URLs of our websites of different vendors and decide among the vendors to which vendor he really wants to go. Once he decides on a vendor, he selects an item and uh, the order is placed. In fact, the vendor has got a, a format of ordering. Order, order, order format is presented to you on your PC by the vendor's website and you fill up this order format and, uh, uh, and the order format you give the what items you require, maybe the item code which is there in the vendor's uh, when there is web, web web thing and uh, the number of items you want to buy, all that you could actually enter in that. And of course, once you do this, you need to have a um, provide a credit card details to be able to uh, pay for whatever you are buying. So there are normally credit card payments. Uh, you enter the credit card number and uh, say that you could debit my credit card you know you can kind of charge to my credit card this amount or some places allow also debit cards where you can give the debit card number and it will be debited to your account. Uh, but many people are little bit worried about revealing their credit card numbers or debit card numbers on the internet primarily because of this difficulty of uh, or the suspicion about security and uh, people hacking and finding out your credit card number and so on. So, uh, 
uh, in spite of the fact that there are a lot of security methods which have been used to um, protect uh, the data flowing on the uh, uh, public switch telephone networks, internet and so on, still there is a human suspicion primarily because off and on you see a report in newspaper about some credit card uh, numbers being stolen and used uh, illegally to debit your account and then you get into a big hassle with your credit card uh, issuer to uh, tell the person that you did not really buy it and you have to be able to prove that you did not buy it and all that. So, you unnecessarily get into all kinds of hassle and also un unnecessary mental worries for a certain period of time. So, many of the e-commerce vendors today also provide uh, a means of cash and delivery. That is, he will send the items, uh, uh, he will deliver, ultimately items have to be delivered physically. Okay? Um, even if there are books, the books have to be delivered physically to you. Um, or uh, if it is a washing machine, somebody has to bring the washing machine and put it in your house. Now, you can pay, make the payment uh, by cash or check or what have, whatever to you to, uh, it is to the person who delivers. So, at the delivery time, the money transactions takes place. So, the money transactions do not take place on the, uh, on the network but uh, essentially the physical payment of cash or credit card depending upon the amount of money involved. It is like the uh, uh, VP post or the post office where the post office delivers and when they deliver you pay to the postman the, uh, the amount or the VP plus the VPP charges. So, many booksellers send books by VPP and also many, many other items which can be sent by post are actually bought by VPP. So, it is somewhat similar to that. Okay. And uh, in fact, in cases like uh, customer buying a ticket uh, from uh, a theater ticket okay, or a ticket for uh, a concert and so on, very often it is delivered and the money is collected from you from you, from you for a little extra charge as for the convenience you have of booking from your home. Okay. But many cases people do not grudge this and uh, uh, the particular people who are a little cautious and do not want to re reveal their credit card numbers prefer this uh, cash and delivery model. And of course, if the credit card payment is, is the payment is for credit card, the vendor has to check with the credit card company whether the customer has got the appropriate amount of uh, credit in his account. Uh, if there is appropriate amount of credit in his account, then uh, that means then the credit card company will okay the transaction. Just like when you present a credit card in a shop, he puts it, he, is, he actually swipes it through a little terminal he has and uh, immediately it goes to the credit card company and then uh, it gives an okay, approved. And uh, when it is approved, then only he kind of uh, prints a bill and takes a signature and uh, the transaction is over. So, before the transaction is over, the vendor actually uh, checks with the credit card company whether there is uh, enough credit balance in the account of the purchaser. And the vendor acknowledges customer's order and gives details of delivery date, mode, transport, etc. If the payment is by credit card, then of course electronically he will send a reply back that your order has been approved. Now it is approved, now I have to send you the items and he will send the items uh, physically and he will say mode of dispatch, uh, expected time of arrival and things like that. And normally the, these vendors do not keep uh, the items with them because if for instance if you look at a, a, a book bookshop virtual bookshop like amazon.com they sell books they sell uh, uh, also music and so on like readif.com in india also sells a, a variety of items now it is just physically impossible to keep all of them in their ready inventory because a huge inventory cost in other words, they do not know who is going to buy what and when. 
So, and also physical store physically storing a huge inventory is expensive because you have to rent that premises and so on. So, what they normally do is that they ask act as middlemen. Now, they as soon as they get the order and they approve the order, they send a um, request to the distributor of the of the items who have, who keeps the inventory to kind of dispatch the item directly to the uh, purchaser. Okay, and of course, in if it is a very fast moving item, for instance, a particular book is extremely popular. They may keep a few copies uh, with them and then dispatch it immediately. But if it is something which is not all that uh, popular, they would effectively go to the distributor. So, it depends. The models vary from uh, uh, one company to the other. They will always find the optimal mix of what to keep in their inventory uh, in their own place and what to kind of get from the distributor. Okay? But by and large, it is a, it's a pure business decision on what what is to be done. And um, credit card company or the customer as soon as the, it approves the payment will debit his account and uh, credit the vendor's account. And the later on the end of the month uh, the bill will be sent to the customer for payment and the customer of course has to pay within a certain stipulated time. Okay. So, that is the, the customer to B to C, business to, there is customer to business you might say or uh, the, 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 there is a, or a B to C, whichever way does not really matter. Normally, it is one, one B to C and uh, now it is, the other is C to C. C to C, one of the most common or uh, popular examples uh, all over the world is eBay because eBay is a an auction site which is a customer to customer e-commerce facilitating site. In other words, it is an internet site which allows uh, two customers uh, who are who both have only electronic presence uh, on their uh, PCs to interact through the middleman you might say okay, and uh, enables this transaction to take place. Okay. And, uh, uh, so, it is effectively I will call it a broker. Okay. So, um, customer wants to sell some item and he advertises on sale and puts the minimum price he expects on the uh, on there and uh, purchaser looks at this uh, uh, web website and uh, he may uh, not be willing to pay that kind of an amount and so he will give his own quote. Suppose you are normally in these cases, it is some second hand stuff like for instance you want to get, get you know if you want to sell a second hand car, you might say I got a, a second hand car with this, which is 3 years old, my uh, asking price is this much and the uh, buyer may, may think that the uh, price is too much or whatever he can afford, he will offer. Okay. So, then multiple buyers can also look at this offers and effectively if he wants it badly enough, he can increase the offer. So, that ultimately the customer will accept this offer which comes and then um, uh, the effectively what the broker has done is to bring together the buyer and the seller. And now of course, uh, many of these middlemen also take care of transporting the item. Also, to some extent, uh, guaranteeing certain quality. In other words, in the sense that uh, suppose uh, you advertise something which uh, is not marked, then the intermediary will uh, take delivery to deliver to you. And so, these are and also the charges both sides of these which have been offered collects fee from both seller and buyer because the money also, money transaction may take place in different modes. Uh, primarily it is a could be a check payment or, or cash payment okay? because credit card payments between customers is somewhat more complicated. Okay? So, uh, or unless you pay to the intermediary and intermediary in terms pays to you, but that is a little complicated. So, the customer to the biggest advantage of the customer to customer e-commerce is that as a seller, you have 
potentially if you are going to sell a car or something like that an india wide uh, customer base uh, in theory because in practice of course normally if you are selling a car uh, the price will be normally in the same town but if you sell some other items which are easy to transport maybe it's a it's a, it's a, it's a large for instance uh, one one thing they people sell uh, are old stamps uh, old stamps which are sold they can be made anywhere in the world okay so in fact your customer can be anywhere in the world who has only got a an internet presence so the whole point is that uh, depending upon the item the customer the uh, the population of you have access to is, is in virtually can be very large because you have now virtual presence in the on the net in fact uh, uh, this this uh, uh, this customer to customer e e-commerce when it started people did not think it will progress very fast but now it has become fairly established business and uh, ebay as an example is a very successful business and that business model has been of course mimicked by other people but being first in the game they have uh, uh, really continuously improved their uh, services and so they also have a worldwide presence today they had a, there is a an indian site which is uh, ecc's vc site and they kind of bought it over and ebay has now come to india and they also have a presence in china and all over the world okay so this again is a question of uh, uh, you know regardless of where you are located whether it is an american company or indian company or chinese company it depends upon how quickly or how fair, who is the first first mover uh, who is the first person who thought about it so that first person gets a lot of advantage and this and this case ebay was the first mover and the person got the advantage and of course continuously the 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 side improved their services otherwise somebody else can easily get into the same same space and uh, beat you okay so one has to be always careful about uh, the first mover advantage is there but still you cannot uh, be essentially based on you know you can't survive on that you got to continuously improve your services and understand the customers problems and so on so the advantages of e-commerce are uh, buying and selling a variety of goods and services from one's home or business the convenience is uh, you don't have to kind of uh, do a lot of traveling and, uh, and nowadays particularly with all the traffic jams and so on and so forth it is much easier to kind of shop from your house without having to go out anywhere anywhere anytime transaction in other words uh, your presence can be anywhere and uh, normally most of the sites are open 24 by 7 okay because after all they are computer servers which are maintained 24 hours a day 7 days a week they are never switched off so your virtual shop you might say is open 24 hours a day 7 days a week unlike a physical shop which has got some restricted hours okay and can look for the lowest cost of specified good or service because you can look at multiple uh, people who sell these things and can compare and find out the lowest cost and the businesses can reach out to a very wide set of clients and establish business partnerships by the way now uh, if you want to buy a book from india some books uh, in fact amazon.com like a bookseller has uh, a huge inventory of books on sale and he also has uh, added a lot of uh, fruits in, in terms of reviews in terms of extracts and things like that to make it easy for you to take, to, to take a purchase decision so all this is made it possible to essentially have a very wide set of clients in fact amazon's clients there are plenty of clients in india also which which who order from amazon because they are not available in many of the indian bookstores and of course you will have to pay for the the cost plus the shipping and things like that it could be a rare book and stuff stuff like that so in theory the businesses can reach out to worldwide client base and establish business partnerships across oceans 
order processing cost is reduced because everything as I said flows electronically. So, there is no need to enter re-enter anything and everything is compared electronically. So, the total cost of processing orders becomes lower. Electronic funds transfer is faster. That is uh, because of the fact that you can essentially do a, a direct uh, transfer of money uh, from uh, one bank account to another bank account electronically, this transfer becomes very fast provided of course you ensure security. Now, the another interesting thing is so called supply chain management is simpler and faster and cheaper. What is the supply chain management? You know what, what is the point is suppose I am a truck manufacturer, okay. I need to buy a number of items from multiple suppliers to be able to make this truck. I will buy my tires from somebody, I will buy my uh, uh, steering wheel with somebody else, I will buy the horn from a third party, I will buy my uh, gears from a fourth party and uh, engine block may be supplied by another other company. So, there are multiple suppliers of items and now to make the truck you have to synchronize all these supplies and if you have a certain production schedule of say making 100 trucks uh, in, in one day. So, all the items are required to make this 100 trucks in that particular day has to be available and this got to be managed and of course, if I order too much then my inventory build up and then the cost goes up. So, the supply chain management means I would be able to, to schedule my supply the, my requirements appropriately to multiple suppliers and manage the chain from the supplier to me that to multiple chains my multiple suppliers who have multiple chains because one supplier may be in suppose I truck, truck manufacture is taking place in uh, um, Pune. One supplier may be in Chennai, another supplier may be in Bombay, third supplier may be in, uh, in uh, Bangalore and so there are different suppliers and each one has got a different travel time because these are all physical items they got to travel by truck or train or what have you. And so, the appropriate timing assets also is going to be done because ultimately at the truck shop all of them have to synchronize uh, and come together to be able to make a truck and without you know, increasing your uh, inventory size too much. Um, so, that management is uh, makes it is easier electronically because if you have a regular supplier you can even kind of give him access to a production schedule and say that I will require this much, this much, this much on these different days. So, he can also uh, actually um, schedule his production to meet your requirements of supplies. In other words, he can also supply gradually as per your requirements and appropriately produce uh, as per your requirement because ultimately to produce he requires raw materials. He also does not want to carry too much raw materials. So, he can very carefully kind of monitor the, the way in which supplies are going to go to the ultimate user and also in turn go to the suppliers and ask them to kind of uh, do uh, an appropriate uh, dispatcher items to him. So, a supply chain means the fact is that one there is a truck manufacturer, there is a component manufacturer and the component manufacturer himself will, will re need uh, the, the um, raw materials or materials from different different vendors like he may have to buy screws and nuts from somebody, he may have to buy uh, some electrical coils from somebody else and so on. So, in other words, he himself has got a supply chain. So, ultimately supplier, suppliers, set of suppliers. So, ultimately there are a group of suppliers and all of them have to kind of synchronize. This is why what is called uh, ch ch supplier chain, chain management. So, this becomes simpler because everybody is connected electronically. So, each one can correspond very fast electronically and schedule and schedule it very, very uh, effectively to kind of not waste too much resources. So, in the long run the 
total resource saving for everybody improves that means total that that in fact in effect reflects itself in the profitability of all these companies and of course their profit profitability if they can improve they can also reduce their prices appropriately to kind of uh, have a reasonable profit so this kind of a possible thing really helps the customer ultimately with and also at the same time helps all the users all the suppliers and so on uh, because they can do an optimization and optimization becomes fairly uh, in other words overall cost of production goes down and ultimately it helps the economy of a country okay or the growth of the of the country's economy so this is what is uh, one of the most in interesting and important things which occurs in e-commerce and um, uh, a purchaser can vendor from can order from several vendors and monitor supplies in other words uh, you don't want to put all your eggs in the one basket in the sense that suppose you want to buy tires you may not buy all the all your tires from one company because suppose that something happens to that company either it goes on strike or or maybe uh, that uh, that uh, that road is blocked because of rains or whatever it is then you may really have three or four possible tire suppliers and you can appropriately change your order from one supplier to the other so you can have several vendors and dynamically alter your requirements and so on and based on the capability as well as the uh, quality and the promptness and so on of different vendors and production schedule and inventory of an organization can be inspected by cooperating suppliers who can in turn schedule their work this is what i said already okay so this is this, this are all the advantages but there are also disadvantages i mean nothing in this world comes with all advantages only there are always some disadvantages and electronic data interchange using the standard edi is expensive for small businesses because there is a very complex set of documents which are being defined for the electronic data interchange and of course there is undergoing a little bit of change to enable the um, smaller businesses to get in through using the xml we talked about xml in, a, in an earlier module and xml uh, along with the uh, do document definition language allows you to kind of uh, do a dgd along with xml and uh, XML is a reasonable substitute for a standard EDI, okay. And people are trying to go towards that that kind of method. But there again, the same problem arises. If each person uses own uh, XML format, there is going to be some difficulty uh, in terms of processing. But of course, this is not um, as as bad as the one where uh, you end up with. Uh, Are entirely different formats and not knowing what format is being used and so on. But still, the point is, it is uh, standard standard formats defined by standard organizations are somewhat complex. Security is always a a problem in electronic commerce, and of course, people have come up with a lot of security methods. I talked about. I'll talk about later on. But still, there is always a fear of viruses. Uh, the use a good virus uh, detecting software uh, new viruses come and every other day we see in the newspapers uh, a new virus which is which comes and kind of wipes out your data or uh, essentially um, creates a lot of nuisance for you and hackers who kind of attack your system now they are getting into your system breaking all security and steal data or corrupt data and things like that and um, also we talked about the uh, uh, denial denial of service attacks where uh, if, if they really want to deny deny a particular uh, uh, company access to their website then they can flood the website with all kinds of frivolous queries so that legitimate buyers cannot access that website because it's always engaged it's like keeping your phone engaged by by useless calls okay 
and they can all paralyze your e-commerce. So, these are real threats for us to be concerned about. Privacy in e-transaction e e not guaranteed. Then in other words, uh, again, because it is a public switch net, the telephone network, somebody can kind of get into the network and uh, steal uh, data which is uh, not uh, enough for is none of his business to get, but they they will try to get it. Okay, so privacy is not guaranteed, particularly in uh, personal information as well as uh, the issues of um, of exchanging data about uh, you know the uh, what what you want to sell, what you want to buy, and stuff like that. If suppose you are advertising a lot of jewelry on the net. And it is it's an open invitation with thieves to come and uh, do something unless you keep your jewelry carefully. So, in other words, the privacy is not ensured. E commerce depersonalizes shopping. In other words, shopping, see, electronically is nice, but you do not really can touch and feel. Uh, feel. In other words, suppose you want to buy some uh, uh, textile items, say, silk sari. Uh, ladies go there, kind of look at all the silk saris, feel that, and see how how good it looks, and so on. And that kind of a uh, feel, touch, touching, and feeling, and handling is uh, not uh, not easy. And uh, also bargain hunting and window shopping, and people go to shopping malls uh, not just to buy items, but to sometimes to meet friends, haggle and. And you actually spend a little time in uh, there. Some people enjoy shopping. Okay, that kind of uh, 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 what I would say personalized shopping is now available in e-commerce. De de Depersonalizes. It makes it completely. You, it insulates you from from the the rest of the population. You might say you don't meet meet anybody. You only meet electronically the uh, the the shop. So, uh, but by and large, there are certain places where uh, this deeper personalization is not relevant. Like if you are buying a train ticket, there is no question of touching and feeling. Similarly, airline ticket and so on, or even books and th books. Of course, you would like to browse, but many of the book sites allow you browsing, gives you extracts and stuff like that. So it is. It is. But by and large, there are certain things which uh, are. Uh, Amenable to e commerce, uh, particularly B2E C e commerce, and certain items are not amenable to that. I think uh, typically uh, a sari may not be am amenable to B2C, whereas a train ticket is definitely amenable to B2C. Okay. And um, now we will get into the actual technical issues about e commerce. And um, when you discuss any, any area, in computer science, what we try to do is to look at different aspects. Or you know, see, when you t so talk about architecture, you say that architecture, uh, like uh, like I've been talking about a building architecture, consists about the ease of use, the various items you go into making it. And there are a number of things like the bricks and mortar, and the kind of paint, and uh, the uh, then the actual design, and so on. So there are different uh, types of things have just to be done by an architect. And so you have to look at some an approach of discussing uh, the uh, the architecture in different layers. The layer layering will be in such a way that each layer can be designed independently. And each layer is self-contained. There is an interaction between layers, but minimal interaction. Okay, so the layers are picked in that such a way that each layer can be discussed and the concerns about that exp explain somewhat independently of the other layers. And uh, normally, you look at multiple layers, starting from bottom layer to the top layer. And the, uh, the layers, the bottom layer is the minimum inf infrastructure, and the higher layers, each layer uses all the services provided by the bottom layers. It is like the bottom layer is the foundation, and then all the others are built one over the other 
till the last last the topmost layer which may be in this case in the case of a house it is a person who is going to live in the house and his convenience and so on. In the case of e-commerce the applications are the topmost. So, I am going to look at e-commerce architecture as a layered architecture with many different layers each layer is being self contained and each layer we will discuss separately. And of course, we will talk about the interaction between layers. So, the bottom mass layer is a physical layer that is a the elect, uh, LAN, uh, public switch telephone network, bridges, routers and so on. And of course, these are not really concerns of e-commerce. So, you have courses on computer networks, computer architecture and so on which will talk about uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the LANs and the vans and the routers, bridges, uh, all those things, okay. Uh, network interface units and what not, okay. So, we are not going to talk about it, but we expect, we, we assume that there exists a physical network on which you are going to build because unless the physical network exists, you can't do anything further. So, the that is the bottom most layer which is the most important layer okay, which enables all the other things to happen. Okay. So, it is it is partly the physical layer only the uh, you might say in this in the case of um, lands, bridges and so on they are the ethernet, the their copper wires, the uh, the uh, uh, you know the connectors, the uh, public switch telephone network which consists of again fiber optic cables may be sometimes even wireless and so on. So, these are all electronic boxes and lines and stuff like that. Okay. And this physical network is over that becomes a logical network that is if you use a TCP IP protocol on a LAN then it becomes a intranet. If the multiple lands are interconnected, it becomes an internet. If lands of businesses are cooperating businesses are interconnected, it becomes an extranet. But all of them use the so called TCP IP protocol. So, they are all uniform using a uniform standard, and that is why it is called a logical network. The physical network is the base on which the logical network is formed. And we will be concerned about the logical network. In other words, we are not actually even the design of a logical network is not our concern and that is again talked about in a computer networks course. Uh, what is the TCP IP protocol, what is Ethernet and, and things like that and, uh, and all the internet facilities of course, to the extent necessary we have talked about the internet in, in the earlier module. So, that you understand what the entire internet means. Over the internet there is a world wide web which is again an application and that has got its own services like uh, hypertext transfer protocol and we talked about HTML, hypertext markup language, uh, XML, extended markup language, object linking and stuff like that and software agents which are essentially small AI, AI programs. Okay. So, they are all services available on the world wide web and um, um, over that, see once you have a world wide web and communication is enabled and there are standards of communication, uh, see world wide web essentially you have browsers, search engines, all those things essentially are in the world wide web and world wide web and I put all of them see, but you know that when you go to the web you can use a, you need to have a browser, you need to have a search engine and so on. So, all of them really are part of the world wide web services. And the, as I said, there is always this security concern about the uh, transactions in the web because the transactions in the web take place normally on the internet. Internet is accessible to everybody. So, there is a layer called secure messaging, encryption, so called firewalls to prevent uh, hackers to come in and uh, sometimes uh, to also virus protection software to protect your virus, protect even viruses. So, there is a virus protection, uh, firewalls, encryption and electronic data, uh, data interchange formats which effectively uh, uh, 
provide you. You might, in fact, TDI could be put also as something which is because these are all sent as messages. Uh, I, I, I put them in the messaging layer because you need to be able to encrypt the EDI also before you send it uh, to protect your privacy and what not. Okay? And some of the EDI may be money transactions. So, that also again requires protection. Then middleman services. The middleman services uh, for, for instance there is which uses all these things and which enables see uh, the commerce like for instance the middleman in the eBay was a middleman service uh, when, when to enable customer to customer e-commerce. There are hosting services suppose the company does not want to have a website maintained in their, in their concern they may have a, a server maintained by 24, 7, 24 by 7 by hosting service which hosts your website and which also has facilities to kind of protect your website from from dinner of service attacks and stuff like that. And value added networks, there is something where essentially provides you some privacy and also provides you EDI and stuff like that. Payment services, that is how do you pay checks, how do you pay cash, how do you, there is a something called PayPal which people use. Uh, uh, which in which which effectively allows payment, uh, which again is software, which works on the internet, or in fact, or as, as a middleman service, which uses a security and what what not, and uh, digital signatures. Uh, you know, when you make an order, uh, send a, a purchase order, you have to sign it. Normally, in a physical purchase order, you have physical signature. Equivalently, in electronic order, you must have electronic signature. So, signatures and somebody has to certify that you are a legal, your signature is legal, that it is really by, by a particular person and that your web presence is also not a fictitious web presence because on the web nobody kind of sees you. You, you, know, you may not have in fact legal presence and you still may have a web address. So, somebody who certifies that you are a legal entity and that you can be kind of held to, you know, you can be held responsible in a court of law and so on is required. So, that is where they call something called uh, certification. So, certification uh, organizations are there to certify your, uh, your presence on the web and to also certify things like your, uh, later on we will see there is something called uh, your uh, public um, uh, you know, you know, you, you know. For you got a, a codes, public codes and private codes and so on. So there are encryption codes. Yeah. So these uh, these things have got to be also certified. Okay. So the that is the middleman services. And of course, over that is application layer we talked about the B to B to B B to C C to C and many more application layers are growing like G uh, C to G. Okay, G to G and what not with garments, suppose you want to transact business. Okay. So, there are the, the application layer we talked about some details, but of course, we have to come back to the application layer. So, what we will do now in the rest of the lectures is to kind of effectively look at each of these layers. I do not, I won't worry about the bottom two layers. Uh, in fact, third layer also I talked about already. Third layer about uh, XML and uh, uh, OLA and you know I have not really talked about OLA, but HTTP, HTML and so on I talked about and I also talked about search engines and an earlier part. But anyhow it is not part of this real course, in fact there are whole courses on, on internet technologies and so on where you will at, at, great, at great length you will talk about logical networks, world wide web and world wide web services and so on. Okay? So, I think my concentration will be on secure messaging because security is very important as I pointed out and on middleman services okay. and of course, the topmost layer which I talked about already. Okay. So, we will concentrate on the top three layers in the rest of this because they are very peculiar to e-commerce. The others are effectively used for all other purposes also other than e-commerce. So, they are, they are covered in many other courses in the curriculum. 
Now, let us start with uh, electronic data interchange because that is one of the things which, uh, which uh, essentially is part of the secure messaging layer. So, electronic data interchange is concerned with computer readable forms where business documents such as invoices, purchase orders, delivery notes, they are in the B2B e commerce so that e documents can be exchanged. Is that in C to C and C to B, it is not all that important because the, in the case of B to C, the business provides you the, the form in which you fill it up. You do not have freedom. Okay. Similarly, in C to C, the middleman will give you some format to fill up. You do not have any freedom. Okay. Whereas B to B, both the B's have freedom. So, you kind of have must have some common understanding uh, or common common standard. Essentially, to eliminate manual data entry, which is always error prone, agree on common formats. Uh, the EDI standards give specifications of commonly used standard business forms. EDI standards have come in fact uh, even back in 1970s or even early late 60s, early 70s. The, the uh, big businesses started transacting business in that day, most days internet was not there. But still, business was transacted electronically in the sense that the purchase order will be sent by a tape if there is a big purchaser. And so, the electronic data interchange took place uh, through tapes and physically the tapes are being exchanged and so on. So, the formats started to be standardized quite early in the, uh, in the history of computers. And there are two standards which are available which, uh, which have been standardized by international agreements. Okay. I will talk a little bit about what these two standards are without going into great details about the standards because uh, that itself is a huge chapter and uh, I'm, I do not have the time to do a, go, a reasonable justice to all of it. So, I will only look at the some aspects of it. It is possible to adapt these standards for documents which are in XML form. Uh, so, that XML as I said is somewhat easier to use so far by, by organizations. Okay. And there are two standards, one is called the ANSI X.12 standard, standard by, standard by American National Standards Institute and something called EDIFACT, Electronic Data Interchange for Administration, Commerce and Trade, standardized by United Nations Commission for Europe for International Trade. The first one is used by Americans, second one is used by Europeans and we also use the European standard. Edifact is used for government transactions, particularly customs department and so on uses, uses this. Cooperating businesses will agree on an EDI standard and programs are needed to translate the, uh, the data received in EDI format to a form needed by application program. That is effectively what one has to do. And uh, we will talk about the uh, transactions in B2B e-commerce uh, by uh, what, what are the EDI transactions uh, next time. And we talk about the VAN, to some extent we will talk about VPN in the next lecture. So, I will start at this point in the next lecture and get into some, some aspects of EDI transactions in um, B2B e-commerce. So, I will stop here. Uh, and continue next time.